Cameroon's government will shut the border with Nigeria tonight and beef up security ahead of a symbolic declaration of independence by activists in the country's English-speaking areas. The authorities in the southwest have appealed for calm and introduced a number of control measures, including banning travel between towns and shutting nightclubs, suspending public transport and the use of commercial motorbikes, and forbidding meetings of more than four people. This will all be in place from tonight until Monday morning. So what's behind the tension and protests that have been going on for months? English speakers in Cameroon have long complained about discrimination in the country. The root of the problem comes from the division of what is now Cameroon between the British and French colonial powers after World War I. Although the two areas came together after independence, many in the Northwest and Southwest still consider themselves as Anglophones and feel they have been treated unfairly by the French-speaking majority. Well, campaigners say that they want the 1st of October to be symbolically named as their Independence Day. But what exactly does that mean? The BBC's Alex Duval-Smith joins us now from Dakar. Alex, what statement are they trying to make? Well, about 20% of Cameroon's population is uh, believed to be English-speaking. And the 1st of October is a symbolic date for them. It's the anniversary of the independence from Britain in 1961 of the Protectorate of Southern Cameroon. And, and that created a federation, uh, which a lot of people in English-speaking Cameroon are happy with. In 1972, however, that federation was abolished in favour of a unified and centralised Cameroon, where the problems, the more recent problems, appear to have begun. Uh, and what's been the reaction of the government to this symbolic declaration of independence? I mean, apart from these measures that they've put in place to ensure security? Oh, I mean, the, the, you, you listed them, and uh, the travel ban, uh, the closing the borders with Nigeria from 8 p.m. GMT tonight until 7 a.m. on Monday morning, uh, which, is a, which is a very uh, uh, direct pointer towards Nigeria. And I have to say that the Nigerian government hasn't reacted, uh, treating this as an internal issue for Cameroon. Uh, and uh, the uh, uh, travel ban between, between cities. So uh, people basically in South Western Cameroon are living in fear of a violent clampdown uh, of the demonstration on Sunday. Uh, we understand that a lot of people have actually uh, taken the last transport available and, and got out and moved over to French-speaking Cameroon to spend at least the weekend there. And of course, this just doesn't end with this declaration because, I mean, the uh, Anglophone area of Cameroon has been complaining about marginalization for years. Oh, yeah, and it's very clear. When you drive into English-speaking Cameroon from French-speaking Cameroon, you know, suddenly the, work, the roads become worse, uh, and, and people are, are very aware of their, 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 their difference in identity, uh, which leads to a lot of hard feeling. And I think one of the reasons why this month, September, uh, has been a, that we've been several, seen several flashpoints is that the schools went back. And in the schools, in the classrooms, people are speaking French, whereas the English speakers want to speak English. Same with the judiciary. They want just judges who speak English, not French. So all these things are coming to the, to the surface again in the run-up of this anniversary that people want to mark. 